Making your own curry paste from scratch is the best way to ensure authenticity in a green or any curry. If you have the time to do this using a mortar and pestle, the way Thais have been doing it for hundreds of years, your reward will be unbelievably flavorful dishes. And you can control the kick in your curry without sacrificing the aromatic effect of all the wonderful herbs and spices. It's simple. If your guests can't tolerate a high level of hotness, use less chilies in the paste not less paste when making the dish. If you like your curry hot, put the kick in the paste, which produces a much more satisfying kind of hotness than piling on the chilies at the last minute. This mortar and pestle was carved from blocks of granite stone. Its hardness and the roundness of its surfaces allow us to produce a smooth consistency by first pounding in the spices and then grinding in the herbs. There are many different kinds of curry paste you can make, depending on what spices and herbs you add, but the technique is the same for all of them. Let's look at the spices first. We have one quarter teaspoon each of coriander and cumin seed, one whole star anise, and about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. These spices have been roasted in a dry wok. Here's how we did it. Because the cooking time is so brief, no oil is needed. We use low heat. When the wok is hot, we add the spices and we saute them for about 30 seconds, long enough for them to become marvelously fragrant. We used a wok to roast our spices, but you can also do it in an ordinary frying pan. And if you don't have gas, an electric stove is fine. Now let's look at the herbs that go into green curry paste and how we prepare them. Galangal is a root from the same family as ginger, but ginger is not a substitute for galangal because it doesn't taste like it. This is what ginger looks like in its whole form, and this is galangal. We're going to use about one teaspoon of this, chopped finely. If you'd like to see where and how galangal grows, Room shows you on a visit to an herb farm in the culinary tour chapter of this DVD. Fresh lemongrass is next. When we use lemongrass in a curry paste, we chop off the bottommost part of the stalk because that's the most flavorful part. One teaspoon chopped finely is what we want. The peel of this kaffir lime is loaded with flavor. That's why it's this part of the fruit that we use in our paste. We use enough of the peel to fill about a quarter teaspoon. Also on your visit to the herb farm, you'll see how both lemongrass and kaffir lime fruit grow. Unfortunately, the peel of an ordinary lime is not a substitute for the peel of a kaffir lime. So if you can't get a kaffir lime, then use three fresh kaffir lime leaves like these. Separate them, remove the stems, then chop them finely. Now if you can't get a fresh kaffir lime or the fresh leaves, then use three dried ones like these. Before you chop them, soak them in water for about 10 minutes. Next, we'll chop one teaspoon of garlic and one teaspoon of shallots.
We use the root of the coriander plant because like lemongrass, the most flavor is at the bottom. You may know this herb by its Spanish name, cilantro. Some call it Thai parsley. If you can't get a coriander plant with the root still on, just use some of the stems. Now we chop the rest of our coriander plant. What we want is a quarter cup of leaves and stems. Don't overlook the importance that fragrance plays in the preparation of Thai cuisine. Coriander leaves are used in many dishes as garnish, not only for their flavor and color, but also for their aroma. Before we start combining our ingredients, let's look at one that some people may not be familiar with. This is shrimp paste, known in Thailand as kapi. It's tiny shrimp, or fish, soaked in salt. It has a very strong flavor and a very strong odor. Southeast Asians have been making and eating it for centuries, and they absolutely love it. But for many Westerners, it's an acquired taste. We encourage you to try it, especially in your curry pastes. You can probably find it in your local Asian grocers in a small container that looks like this. To start learning why and how shrimp paste is so important, try this. Leave it out of this recipe until all the ingredients have been combined in the mortar. Smell the fragrance of the mixture. Then add one half to one teaspoon of the shrimp paste and smell it again. Ready? Let's start. But before we do, we'll add an eighth teaspoon of salt. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, or you have a case of tennis elbow, at this stage you can use an electric blender. Now it's the chilies and the herbs that give our green curry paste its smooth consistency, and we add them in increments, grinding and pounding each step of the way. We've pounded our spices to a powder. Green chilies are next. Now we're making enough curry paste here to yield about four servings. If we use seven or eight of these bird's eye chilies, our paste will be very hot. If you prefer a more moderate level of heat, five or six is enough. And if you or your guests are sensitive to heat, use three or four. Several of the herbs going into this paste and many Thai dishes are believed to have very healthful benefits. It's said that lemongrass is good for your kidneys, Galangal aids digestion, lime leaves are of course loaded with vitamin C and believed to contribute to healthy gums. And chilies, with their naturally occurring chemical capsaicin, are thought to stimulate the appetite and promote a feeling of well-being. Now our chilies are in small pieces and it's time to add the herbs. After a few minutes, we have a smooth paste. Our coriander leaves and stems are next. Now, as I suggested earlier, before we add the shrimp paste, we're going to test the fragrance. How's that okay? Okay. Let's add the shrimp paste. This essential Thai cooking ingredient is another you'll learn the source of in the culinary tour. After a quick mix, we pound our paste until it's really smooth.
So all in all, we've invested about six minutes to achieve this homemade curry paste. When you taste your curry, you can decide if it's worth the effort. Thank you.